day and welcome to this episode of Balkanese Podcast again. I am your host, Eddie Balambula, host of Balkan, Balkanese Podcast and founder of Balkan Immigration Services. Today, I have the pleasure of receiving again Shafoli Kapoor. Um, we have already discussed with her uh, concerning other matters. Today, we will be talking about the Ontario Immigration Nominee uh, Program with her. So we want to know, we will let her tell us exactly what is that program? How does it work? I told you last time she knows it a lot. So uh, we want to learn from her. We want to be able to understand uh, the overview of the program. How it does work? How does it affect you? Who can apply for that kind of a program? And, and what are the criteria, uh, the eligibility criteria for the program? So without far, uh, further ado, I will let her uh, go ahead and start. But I will start by saying, welcome, Shafoli. How are you doing today? Uh, thank you so much, Eddie, for having me again on your podcast. It's an absolute pleasure uh, to talk to you um, and to be here on your channel. I'm doing very well. Um, so yeah, fresh and rejuvenated. The weather is absolutely amazing outside in Toronto. Uh, so yeah, I'm always pepped up with good weather. <laughs> That's excellent. I didn't I didn't mention that you are the founder of T Dot Immigration. You want to say a quick word about it about your practice? Yes, so I am a licensed Canadian immigration uh, consultant, just like yourself. Mm -hmm. uh, the name of my firm is T. Immigration. I am based in Toronto. Uh, I have my own um, office. Um, and uh, yeah, if um, you know, um, right. any of you ever, if you're ever in Toronto, please do drop in. We can have a cup of coffee together. <laughs> I am planning it. I'm going to let you know very soon it will happen. <laughs> so today we are talking about the Ontario Immigration Nominee Program. So what is this program? What can you tell us uh, about this program and who can apply for it? Perfect. So before we talk about the Ontario Immigrant Nominee Program, I, I'm going to uh, give a brief background of provincial nominee programs per se to your viewers and listeners Excellent. Uh, and not be, and and I, I say that because not everybody is very familiar with the, you know how pnps work what is a pnp these jargons are you know french mm -hmm. to non french speakers <laughs> exactly you're right you're right about so, that um so ca canadian immigration it works um there are multiple ways of immigrating to canada as we speak right now there are probably over 50 programs under which one can immigrate to Canada. Okay. There are there's economic programs, there's family sponsorships, there's refugee programs, there's entrepreneur programs, which also come in economic to some extent. And then we have um, humanitarian programs. So there are various programs through which one can um, immigrate to Canada. Now, when we talk about provincial nominee programs, this is another way of immigrating to Canada through an economic route. Okay. Every province has an agreement with immigration, with IRCC, that every year they are going to nominate a certain amount of people and every province have their own, um, you know, set targets that IRCC allocates to them year on year. Uh, and th these targets have been increasing, um, you know, every year as well. Um, mm -hmm. As we all know that immigration has also been increasing their immigration targets. Okay. So um, every province gets a target, an allocation limit, and then they the province based on their labor market needs, send out invitations to people to apply uh, for a nomination to that province. And upon receiving a nomination, that particular candidate can eventually go out, uh, go back to IRCC and either apply to, for permanent residence through a non-express entry route or okay. through the express entry route. Now I come to the Ontario Immigrant Nominee Program. So okay. uh, very similar to the entire overall PNP program, uh, Ontario Immigrant Nominee Program also every year gets a set target to invite people uh, from inside Canada and outside Canada to come to the province and contribute to their economy. Mm -hmm. uh, now, the, the labor market needs of the provinces keep changing. It's dynamic based on their needs, based, based on their demands it keeps changing. Ontario is a very, very popular province amongst all immigrants, whether it's inside Canada or outside Canada. People, um, and, and, and the reasons are obvious. More and it is also, also one of the largest, right? 
Mm-hmm. One of the largest, and and then obviously more job opportunities. Mm-hmm. The weather is more, uh, you know, um, it, it's comparatively better than you know yes. the other provinces in Canada. So people do settle down in um, in Ontario, Ontario, and we've seen um, a significant increase in the number of immigrants that have been coming to Ontario year on year. And in fact, recently our um, minister uh, also announced that they are actually going to seek um, an increase in the, uh, like they're actually seeking the, to double the intake of uh, immigrants to, uh, mm-hmm. to, Ontario. to so Ontario. Right now we're sitting at, our allocation limit is at somewhere around eight, 9,000 um, nominations for this year, but they're actually seeking to double it for next year. Uh, and they've been trying it for a couple of years, but let's, let's hope that that happens. So um, more opportunities then. Absolutely. More opportunities and we could even see more programs coming up. Okay. Right. Now, uh, the programs. Uh, There are several programs under the Ontario Immigrant Nominee Program as well. Uh, I'm going to first talk about the programs that are very popular about for people inside Canada. Okay. So there are there are programs that um, uh, that are based on job offers. If there's an employer who's willing to give you a job offer, um, you can... um, Apply to uh, apply to the province based on that job offer. Obviously, there's an eligibility criteria to meet. Um, you know, there's language proficiency to meet. There's um, some some programs require education in Canada. Some program requires you to have experience in a certain knock in which you're getting a job in in Ontario. Mm-hmm. Um, then the employer also has to meet their eligibility criteria, and we can probably talk about that in a little detail going forward. Mm -hmm. Uh, Then there are programs wherein if you have experience in a skilled knock code in Canada. All right. um, There are programs through the express entry pool. If you have experience in one of the, um, you know, the in-demand knocks in the province, then Ontario will automatically send you an invitation through the express entry pool. Um, That is if you have, uh, that is if you have an express entry profile. Yes. Yes. So, so like I said, there are programs um, that are through express entry and then mm-hmm. there are programs that are outside, um, outside of the express entry, not through express entry. Exactly. And uh, before uh, you can uh, you start preparing to apply to the province, you need to make sure which program are you eligible? Because not, not everybody is eligible for all the programs um, that Ontario has, Absolutely. right? Absolutely, yes. Um, so, uh, so like I said, so if, if, if you have a job offer, then you can apply based on the job offer to the province. And if you got an invitation directly to the express entry pool based on your experience in a certain knock, then you can apply to the province based on um, that on your invitation. Upon receiving an invitation, then you can apply for permanent residence through, uh, ex- through express entry. Exactly. Exactly. OK, so uh, what kind of uh, candidates then would be uh, appropriate for programs under the Ontario Immigration Nominee Program. How, how do you determine which candidate you can, um, you know, recommend to go through the Ontario programs rather than uh, New Brunswick, for example? So, um, so immigration consultants like us, we go by um, the data available to us historically. Mm -hmm. So we go by what the provinces have been doing so far. Mm -hmm. Uh, We know that Ontario um, has a list of no codes. Uh, So let's talk about the express entry street, right? Okay. Which is also called the, the the, which is also called the human capital. The human capital. Yes, exactly. So in that stream, um, Ontario does two specific kinds of draws. One uh, draw is specific to the IT sector. Okay. They want people in the IT sector in the express entry pool to apply to Ontario. Uh, then they also have another list wherein they only invite, there's a certain list of candidates um, or not codes, I would say, uh, in the financial sector, um, in the in, in healthcare, such as nurses, registered dietitians. Um, and then um, we've seen um, invitations going to um, uh, I can't think er, er, of elderly. Top of my head. Yeah, okay. But but yeah, so there's an IT specific draw and then there's a non-IT specific draw and they exactly. send out invitations uh, to people in the express entry pool. Now, okay. Ontario usually um, 
they align their draws with uh, the, the express entry draws and their knock codes are usually revolve or are very close to, so the cutoffs are very close to the cutoffs of the express entry, of the express entry. Uh, draws, okay. specifically for the federal skilled worker stream. So usually in the past, we've seen that the cutoff for express entry for the Ontario Migrant Nominee Program Human Capital Stream is usually in the, in, in the, in the, um, in the range of 460, uh, okay. at least in the, la in the last uh, year, that's what we've seen. And they, like I said, they align it with the express entry draws and the express entry draws or the cutoffs for the federal skilled worker stream are usually over 460. We've not seen those scores coming down at least since 2020, right? Okay. Um, in fact, even in 2019, the scores had gone up, uh, but, but let's just go back to 2020. Uh, when we had a few draws for federal skilled workers. But let me ask you this, uh, Shafoli. Uh, why would one try or uh, want to go with Ontario Immigration Nominee Program if they already have, let's say, um, uh, uh, an express entry profile with about uh, 460 points, and they have selected Ontario as, the pro as a province where they want to settle? So why would they then want to go for the OINP? So the only reason, uh, so here, I'm, the only reason, and, and I'm going to talk on based on my experience with okay. my clients, right? Okay. I can't comment. I mean, I, I would not generalize it, mm -hmm. but based on my experience, I've seen there's a fear factor. People don't know if the scores are going to come down. Okay. And if the scores are not going to come down, they might not get an invitation from the federal pool. Okay. Right? So then they, if they get an invitation from the Ontario Immigrant Nominee Program, uh, usually candidates want to go ahead with that opportunity. Now, the good thing with the Ontario Immigrant Nominee Program is once they send an invitation through the express entry pool, they give you 45 days to apply. Okay. And those 45 days are enough for a candidate to, to wait and see if they can get an invitation in the next 45 in, all days. All right, I see. Okay. And if they don't get an invitation in the next 45 days, then they just go ahead and apply under the OINP. And there's really no harm in applying other than losing the money. That's exactly. That you paid to the Ontario Migrant Nominee Program, which is quite a bit, $1,500. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. But other than that, there's really no other drawback from applying to the province, right? I mean, it's just a, the, it's just just a um, sure shot, um, okay. you know, uh, chance for that particular candidate, uh, knowing that if they have a nomination from the province, they get the approval, they get the 600 points, they'll absolutely definitely get an invitation under the federal skilled worker right. program as well, once they have the approval. So based right. on your experience, do you have a lot of clients who chooses to uh, go for both the express entry and the Ontario uh, Immigration Nominee Program? Uh, so uh, my clients, uh, the ones who get a nomination from express entry will, will um, are the ones who've not been able to get a draw, uh, like an invitation otherwise, okay. right? And my strategy with my clients usually is let's wait for at least 30 days Okay. Because we have 45 days to apply. Mm -hmm. Let's for, wait for 30 days. And if we don't get an invitation in the federal skill stream directly, then we're going to apply uh, uh, to the OINP and get a nomination. So my clients pref obviously prefer um, getting an invitation directly through the through the federal stream, like the, okay. the federal um, skilled worker stream. But um, with Ontario, most of the time, people don't hesitate to apply. They're like, okay. that's fine. At the end of the day, they all are going to immigrate to Ontario, right? And they're going to pay money. From Ontario only helps. <laughs> all right. That's fine. That that's, uh, makes it clear for, for us and for our viewers and listeners. Uh, so what else uh, can you tell them or can you tell us about this program? What else uh, should we know about how the program actually works? And how do they select people? Right. So, um, like I said, on uh, all the provinces um, have the there is there is a lot of research that goes into uh, what are the uh, the requirements um, of the province, what are the okay. labor market needs of the province, and how do that research happen? They they connect with employers. Ontario connects with the employers. They connect with uh, stakeholders at various levels. They come. They connect with the lobbying. Um, uh, you know, the law, the lobbying departments of, for example, the trucking union, right? Okay. Yes. Um, I remember last year or when they launched the program for the truck, truck workers in Ontario, uh, 
the the trucking union um, lobbied for Ontario to to establish a program for truck drivers in Ontario so that they can eventually get permanent residence exactly. because we had no program before that for, for truck drivers. Exactly. So um so uh, so uh, several you know meetings with stakeholders and employers and contractors and all of that goes which which helps the province to decide what are the the the, the occupations actual needs. That, are in need in problems. Exactly. For example, right now, we know that they really need people in the trades mm-hmm. stream. Mm-hmm. And they have been lobbying for that, that they need more people in the trade stream uh, to come to the province and work because there's there's a shortage of exactly. employed, like mm-hmm. people to work in that industry. So so every province, and, and, and I mean, obviously, because we're talking about Ontario, Ontario has a list of knock codes that are in demand. Now, there are some provinces that will announce that list, list okay. of knock codes that are in demand. And then we also have some provinces like Alberta that do not release any lists. Mm-hmm. They just suddenly do a draw. And then after the invitations have been sent out, you just find out. Word of mouth, we find out what are the knock codes that were sent out the invitations. They don't release a list. Whereas Ontario has been very, very transparent with the list of uh, knock codes that they've been inviting. Like I mentioned that, you know, they have a specific list of about six knock codes in the tech sector. So they okay. want people to come to Ontario um, and work in the and technology in the, industry. Yeah, okay. mm-hmm. And anybody who's in the express entry pool, uh, with in with experience in those knock codes, in those six knock codes, I think we have the software developers, we have information analysts and data analysts, we have um, web designers, web developers. So there are six knock codes that are in the tech sector. And then we have another non-tech sector list wherein people uh, with you know experience as nurses and dietitians and financial analysts uh, in the financial sector, human resource management. Mm-hmm. So they get invitations um, in the non-tech sector. And once okay. you, so if you have an express entry profile set up and you've put your knock code, which is in demand in Ontario as your primary knock. So you have Ontario, chances, yeah. And if you meet the cutoff for that mm-hmm. particular draw, Ontario will send you an invitation through the express entry pool. Exactly. Once exactly. you receive that invitation in the express entry pool, you then create your profile on the Ontario Immigrant Nominee Program's e-filing portal, and you apply to the to OINP for the nomination. Whatever points you have claimed for your experience. In the express entry pool, you now prove that experience with documentation to OINP. Okay. If OINP is convinced that, yes, you do meet the requirements of that knock code, you've actually done a substantial number of duties listed Mm -hmm. in that knock code, then they give you a nomination. As soon as you get the nomination approved, you get 600 points in your express express entry entry profile. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then let you sit in the in the pool. So let's assume uh, the candidate who gets an invitation was at 460. With the 600 points, they'll be at 1060. Yes, and whenever yes. there is a next draw, they get an invitation to apply for permanent residence through Express The Express Entry. Entry. That's a guarantee for them then. All right. Absolutely. All right. So how frequently does the Ontario Immigration Nominee Program draw or send nomination to people or invite uh, uh, candidates? Uh, is it aligned to the express entry or how does it work? So um, it, last year we did see the, the, them doing, uh, you know, draws every month, but this year they've been a little, um, you know, behind with those draws. Uh, They were trying to establish the new expression of interest system. There were a lot of changes that came in the uh, the programs. So we've seen relatively lower draws this year, Um, but, um, uh, but we've, um, I mean, they used to do a draw every month. Um, At least last year they did every month. Okay, so I will say at least once a month then roughly. Yes, that's right. Okay, so now, uh, based on your experience and in your uh, and your practice, do you uh, usually, or does it happen to you for you to recommend a candidate to apply for more than one program? Let's say, for example, the Ontario Immigration Nominee Program and any other, either Express Entry or another or provincial uh, nominee program. Um, and if you do uh, recommend the Ontario Immigration Nominee Program, that's the one we are talking about today, why would you, in some instances, prefer the Ontario uh, than the other ones? 
So, um, so when we set up our profiles for express entry, uh, there is an option. There's a question there which asks, what province would you like to settle in? Yes. I usually recommend my clients to select all provinces. Definitely. Because you never know uh, which province could send you an invitation. Mm -hmm. So you want to open up all, all doors for you. You don't want to restrict yourself to only a certain uh, province, right? Um, so obviously you open up yourself to all provinces and you select um you know you select all provinces as as your choice of uh province okay now what happens is that um based again based on your experience based on your knock code based on uh you know the labor market needs of that province based on if you have any family living in that province uh specifically with alberta um your chances of getting invited increase, right? So uh, giving an example like Alberta, if you have a sibling in uh, living in Alberta, your chances increases. But with Ontario, we've seen they are very, very particular only about knock codes. They go by knock code draw. So if okay. you are in that knock code, they don't really care if you have a sibling living here or not. Um, I'll give you an example. I've had a client in the past whose sibling used to live in uh, in Alberta okay. and uh, the client got an invitation from Ontario because they did meet the cutoff requirements and the, uh, you know, the, the knock code that Ontario was looking for. So they did get an invitation and we were successfully able to get the nomination approved as well. And then we've also had it vice versa with Alberta sending out an invitation to one of my clients sitting at a score of 300 uh, and that person's sibling was living in Ontario. So, okay. um, and we were able to prove the intentions that this person will eventually go and live in Alberta as well. So again, it's very case to case basis. I usually tell my clients in very layman terms that PNPs are a gamble. Okay. Um, okay. So um, you should prepare, you should put an effort from your end, get into the pool, uh, make sure that you've prepared your profile in a way that it is ready for PNPs for you to get an invitation from the PNP, but then you will get an invitation from a particular province or not is not guaranteed, right? Some provinces, the nominations are very targeted. We know that these are the no codes. Mm -hmm. I am under this no code. I will get an invitation, mm -hmm. but then there are other provinces that are not as targeted. All right. Uh, for example, I I had a client who retained me back in 2019 in January. Uh, and it's all about patience and perseverance too sometimes. So January 2019, she re retained me. Uh, she was at a score of 435 at that time. Okay. I convinced her. I motivated her. She redid her IELTS exam. And in 2020, about August, her or actually, yeah, about August, her score increased to 460. Okay. She did the IELTS again. But we never had draws low at 460. She was okay. never able to meet the cutoff. So she never got an invitation. And in February of this year, mm -hmm. she got an invitation from Nova Scotia. Two years later. Wow. Okay. Right? And okay. Nova Scotia had never done an invitation uh, for her knock code before. It was a knock code in the financial industry. Knock code 1114. They had never done invitations in that knock code before. And suddenly... Out of the blue, we were not expecting it. She got an invitation. Okay. So do you then recommend your client to just uh, do what they can to be Absolutely. in the pool? Absolutely. It's all about... So, uh, so, immig so uh, immigration goes two ways. One, okay. your efforts, targeted efforts. Okay. And two, destiny. Okay. Right? <laughs> because PNPs are not in our control. Mm -hmm. I uh, I don't support people who would go ahead and you know pay for LMIs, give up money to employers to be hired, and all. I don't recommend my clients to do that. I would rather tell them to work on themselves okay. and enhance okay. their profiles if it means to improve their IELTS, if it means to improve their language proficiency, uh, if it means to learn French as a second language, oh. um, if they can do, uh, uh, you know, uh, be and 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 patience, right? Just get okay. into the express entry pool, get your education. If it means to do another program elsewhere, like maybe if you just have a bachelor's, how about pursue an, a one year master's somewhere? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. do some, do anything and everything to enhance your profile, and then patience is the key. 
All right. I was then going to the second uh, second point you just mentioned, French. So French speaking people, they have some kind of advantage, and it, 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 there is a program for French speaking uh, candidates in the Ontario Immigration Nominee Program. That's right. And that's also through Express Entry, right? Mm -hmm. So that, again, if you're in the Express Entry pool and you have listed that, you know, like you've done a, a, um, like a, a test in, in uh, French, the care for the TCF, mm -hmm. then again, they will send out invitations to people sitting in the Express Entry. So just before this call, I was having a consultation with a client sitting in Singapore. And that's exactly what I told them. They were on the wrong side of the age. Um, and they, they weren't meeting the cutoffs, okay. even if they got the maximum in their language, they, they had maxed out on their education points because they have masters, uh, even if they did, like got a maximum score in IELTS, but they still were short on points if they were okay. to be in the express entry pool. Okay. So I recommended them that if they have the ability to, to learn French, then mm -hmm. they should learn French and maybe, you know, that will add up points for them in the express entry pool. Okay, so now how do you then uh, select which category? The Ontario Immigration Mini Program has subcategories. Uh, how do you go and prefer the, uh, the human capital, for example, rather than the French uh, speaking category. How, how, how do you um, advise your clients with that? So I don't, so, so I tell my clients that um, let's assume we're talking about the human. So getting selected under a particular program under in express entry is not in our control. Mm -hmm. We cannot go out and apply to the province unless they've sent us an invitation. Exactly. Right? So we just prepare our profiles in a way and set it up in a way that we are visible to the province when they when they go into the express entry system and crawl through the profiles and they set the criteria mm -hmm. getting an invitation is a pure gamble okay. yes we 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 guide the client that you know if you get your friend score you might get invitation i will guide them of what the uh, the historical draws have been like how many mm -hmm. invitations have been sent out what is the quota left for this year what to expect I can guide them. But again, there's never a guarantee that they will get an invitation. Definitely not. We, we right? don't. We, yeah. So now tweaking the profiles here and there, as long as we're not misrepresenting is fine. But, uh, uh, but again, I mean, um, I'll give you an example. Okay. Um, okay. And so this is what we did with one of my clients in the past. Um, so this person had uh, a spouse. Okay. And the spouse had done an IELTS exam as well. But if we added the spouse's points, we realized that in the in the OINP, uh, in the pool, they were not meeting the cutoff because OINP always sends invitation in a certain range. Okay. And then people over a certain score do not get an invitation okay. because OINP thinks that they will eventually get an invitation through the federal skilled worker program. Okay. But then... Ontario has not, uh, but can IRCC has not been doing the federal skill worker draws. Right? Exactly. So what we ended up doing was we ended up not adding the spouse's IELTS score. We said, we don't want to show the IELTS. That's fine. Okay. The, the client then just got in between that range of the OINP score range. Wow. Okay. And then they got an invitation from the non province. So you need to be strategic as well. Exactly. It's all about strategizing. Yeah. What is it that's going to work in the best interest of your client? Mm -hmm. How is it that we can make it in a way that they can maximize on the results? Right. Sometimes if I have a client who has experience in Alberta and they've been living in Alberta, I only choose Alberta as a province for nomination because I know if I only choose Alberta, they will get a nomination from Alberta. From Alberta. Okay. All right. right. But in that case, I will not choose all provinces. If I have a client who's living in BC and I know that they meet that cutoff range, I will only select them okay. and select BC as their province of uh, choice. So now, uh, Shafoli, let's talk a little bit about those candidates who are outside of Canada. How do you uh, recommend uh, Ontario Immigration Nominee Program to them? And what factors do you consider before advising a client to apply under the OINP? So if my clients have a knock code, which I 
which I have seen that mm-hmm. in the past Ontario has been inviting mm-hmm. or based on, you know, we always keep ourselves updated. Like, like we're, we, we always follow the news, the updates in the immigration industry. So if I feel there's something that Ontario is thinking of doing, like we know right now that they're going to go big on the trades, uh, not yes. right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So we might even hear in the future that they might introduce another program uh, where, you know, they'll add on the new trades or, or something they're going to do. So if, um, I feel that my client's no code or experience matches um, the, 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 the no codes that have been sent out invitations in the past, then mm-hmm. I will recommend them the human capital stream for sure. Okay. If they're in the IT st- industry, goes without saying. They need to be in the, in the express entry pool. But again, if their score is too low, like mm-hmm. in the 400s, lower 400s then okay. obviously the chances of getting invitation from oinp might not be that strong because exactly. oinp scores in the past have been really high so then in that case i will tell them we've seen uh we've seen nova scotia sending out invitations from in the it stream we've seen alberta recently sending uh, invitations to um people in the IT industry. So mm-hmm. then I will open up all avenues for them. Okay. Right. Okay. But if their score is over 460, then I will tell them you will get a nomination from Ontario. So let's just sit there and wait. I don't get too many clients from French speaking countries just because, um, you know, that's not my talk. Like I don't speak yeah. French. I don't usually get uh, candidates from, from that region or, but I, I do have some clients who will specifically like you know just for the purpose of strategizing will go out and learn French absolutely they, then um I mean I mean if they do know French we'll add the scores and again mm-hmm. it's a gamble if they get an invitation then they get lucky with it so that's one way of strategizing then the other way of doing it is that some of my clients outside Canada have employers inside Ontario who are willing to sponsor them then in that case, I recommend them the Ontario's um, employer job offer stream for foreign workers. Okay. Right. If you have two years of experience in that particular knock, uh, and if you're getting hired in the same position, then your chances of getting nominated through the province are much higher. And in that case, you have to directly apply to the province. You don't go through express entry. All righty. Thank you very much, Shafoli. So to our listeners and viewers, you see how knowledgeable Shafoli Kapoor is. She is the founder of T. Immigration. I will put the information how to contact her uh, below this video and and, uh, in the description uh, box as well. So feel free to contact her directly or you can reach us uh, reach out to us, Balkan Immigration Services. We will do. Uh, it will be a pleasure for us to uh, put you in contact with uh, Shafoli or to help you with your immigration needs. We are unfortunately um, heading towards the end of the episode, but um, let me ask you, Shafoli, a little bit of uh, tips and tricks or advices that you may have uh, for both uh, practitioners and for candidates. So let's say, let's start with uh, candidates first. What, uh, what kind of tips and tricks would you give one who would like to immigrate in Ontario through the Ontario Immigration Nominee Program? So there are two things that I tell all my clients and I'm going to share with your viewers and listeners as well. Patience is the key. Okay. Don't get impatient. Uh, we have to understand that Canada is one country whose economy relies on immigration. Okay. We don't know what's going to happen 10 years from now, but Mm -hmm. at least for the next five years, immigration is not going anywhere. Mm -hmm. Canada needs people. That's the bottom line. That's 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 a fact. Bottom line, Canada needs people in various industries. Mm -hmm. So you you will get an opportunity to immigrate to Canada. You just have to be patient and you have to to strategize. You have to work on yourself to improve your profile, whether it's pursuing higher education, whether it's to do um, 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 learning French, whether it's to um, gain experience in a specific NOC that is highly in demand in Ontario. And sometimes it's also sometimes it's just about being patient and being there. In the express entry pool, you, like I said, I gave you a live example. I had a client who retained me two years ago and got an invitation to apply mm-hmm. two years later, mm-hmm. right? Make sure you, your, your profile is never inactive in the express entry pool. It's always active and keep trying to improve your, your profile. 
Keep applying for jobs. You never know. Maybe there's an employer who's willing to hire you. They give you an opportunity because there are employers out here who genuinely, genuinely need people to work for them. They definitely, can't find definitely. people to work for them in mm -hmm. Ontario. In mm -hmm. I mean, in, in jobs. So that's first and foremost for the candidates. Perseverance and patience and um, work towards improving your profile. Okay. And in terms of the client, uh, our practitioners, uh, the, the only thing I will say is work in the best interest of your client, Perfect. not Perfect. in your best interest, All in right. the best interest of your client. Because if you're working in the best interest of your client, the client will stay with you. And even if they're not getting it, they will still respect you because you've always put them first and not your, yourself first. I see clients who will say, um, we, I've seen practitioners who will say, yeah, yeah, we can do this for you. We can do that for you. But it's really not the best option for your client. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right? A and they it might shows. not get approved. Exactly. Right? I, I get people coming to me saying, oh, I, I'm, in, I'm in India and I want to apply for uh, a restaurant supervisor. But okay, I have an LMI. Somebody's giving me an LMI. I'm going to give them $20,000 and they're going to give me an LMI. But how is your work permit going to get approved? There are so many restaurant supervisors here to fill up. Your work permit will not get approved. And, so and do not. Oh, I'm sorry to interrupt, but also you're not even supposed to be paying for a job. Exactly. This is illegal. Exactly. They're not. So people need to educate themselves. Mm -hmm. Immigration doesn't expect you to pay. For example, right now with people outside Canada, we've seen biometric appointments is becoming such a people are paying money to book biometrics appointment, but they don't understand that you've already paid for biometrics, $85. Remember when we did the application, <laughs> you're not expected to pay more. So, so people need to educate themselves. Mm -hmm. People need to be aware mm -hmm. that government, yes, as immigration practitioners, we have a fee, but our fee is all listed on the retainer agreement. Absolutely. And that is what you pay. Mm -hmm. whatever we we whatever time we put into your application whatever services we provide you we will put down that in a retainer agreement anything and whatever the government fees is will be on the retainer agreement anything mm -hmm. outside of that is it's not part of it it's not part, you're not supposed to be paying it mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right um so so for practitioners the only thing i always say is that please work in the best interest of your client mm -hmm. and you will get work. Everybody, there's so much work for practitioners in Canada that 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 everybody will have enough to do. They enough need, to do, and we all only it. need so much. We can't do immigration for the entire world. All no. of us can only do so much, <laughs> right? And we need to be happy with what we got. Okay. All right. All right. All right. They. I hope they. I hope they all heard you. Both of us. I mean, all of us practitioners and candidates. Uh, so this is Shafoli Kapoor, the one and only. Uh, I, I, uh, <laughs> I enjoy um, doing this with her, this episode and every other episode to come because there is more to come. Um, let me ask you uh, this, Shafoli. What kind of uh, mistakes or, or do you often see that people make or practitioners make um, that they should be aware of and to avoid? This is going to be probably one of my last questions. I just thought about, is there anything that you think that you commonly see comes often that could be avoided? So the biggest mistake that I've seen, and we're talking about entire immigrant norms. Absolutely, right? yes. The biggest mistake that I've seen people do is submitting incomplete applications. Hmm. So we have to remember that whenever anything is based on an invitation mm -hmm. it is our one chance at it right if mm -hmm. ontario has sent out us an invitation to apply it is our one chance at it we cannot lose that opportunity so Absolutely. make sure that your application is complete to its entirety when you're submitting it because mm -hmm. if it's incomplete they are going to you send back your application as incomplete and you lose your golden chance of getting nomination through that province. And you don't know if you're going to get an invitation again. Maybe not. Maybe not. Wow. Right? This is, yeah, yeah. This, this is very key. It's very key, very good and very important. And this uh, also brings me to uh, the fact that if you want to maximize the chances of uh, a success of submitting a successful application why don't you uh, do yourself a favor of hiring uh, a professional uh, consultant lawyer whoever you want but who's regulated 
who's authorized by the immigration uh, uh, law and uh, bodies, governing bodies, to do this job. So uh, Shafoli Kapoor is there. Uh, Edi Balambula, I'm here with Balkan Immigration Services. She is with uh, TDOT Immigration. Please feel free to contact us. And Shafoli, I will uh, give you the honor, i let you the honor of uh, uh, providing the information. How would you want to be contacted? Your phone number, email address, uh, and all that, so that our listeners and viewers who want to retain your service can can do so. Uh, sure. My like I said, the name of my firm is T Dot Immigration Services. I'm located in Toronto, uh, and uh, I can be reached out via phone. My phone number is four one six nine four seven six seven one zero, and you can also email me at my first name Shafali at t dot imm dot com. All right. Thank you very much. Again, Shafoli, for your time, uh, we are going to do more episodes to speak and talk specifically about the Ontario Immigration Nominee for, uh, Program. Today was an overview of the program, but there are categories with uh, criteria that we did not talk about. So we will probably uh, do more episodes to talk about it. So for you out there, listeners and viewers, thank you very much for taking the time to listen to us. This is Balkanese Podcast with your one and only host, Eddie Balambula. We are here to invest in you because you matter. Thank you, and we'll see you next time.